Congratulations! You just won the crime victim lottery and you are the victim of a home invasion. People attacking you in your home. What are you going to use to defend yourself? What kind of weapon would you use? In this video, we're going to talk about home defense weaponry. And don't worry, I'm not going to just tell you that it's a, the answer is a gun and you're probably screwed anyway. I, that's, that is the answer. But I'm also going to cover you know stuff besides guns. So yes, absolutely, a gun is the best weapon for home defense, period. Uh, but it has to be a gun that you are proficient with, and if you're really serious, it has to have a flashlight attached to it. This is a PL Pro Valkyrie. We just did a review on it. I'll link that up there. They're having a flash sale on it coming up soon. You can get these up to 40% off. But on any gun, you have to be proficient with it, and it needs a light on it. That's a must. Now, no matter what your reasoning, maybe a firearm is not right for you. Maybe you don't have access to one, either legally or morally. Maybe you don't want one. Maybe you can't afford one. In this video, I'm going to cover some non-gun self-defense weapons and also some improvised weapons common around the home that you could use in like a home invasion or home self-defense scenario. So right now, let's do a thought experiment right now. Comment below where you are, like what room of your house you're in or where you're at, wherever you're at, and what you would use as a weapon if you were attacked right now. Not guns, because that's too obvious, and I, I know that you're all six foot four and jacked and you're a black belt and like three different things, but pretend you're not. Improvised weaponry or planned non-firearm weaponry, what would you use, how would you use it? One big problem with guns is that they have to actually be on you. You have to be carrying it for it to be effective. A lot of people take some shit like this and put it next to the door. You know, if it's by the door, same thing with the old baseball bat. Your Whatever your weapon is, it has to be close to you. If it's not on you when it happens and you can't make it ready really quick, or if the bad guy's going to end up between you and your weapon, that's not going to work. Uh, this is a prime example. I've been to a lot of houses where some dudes took one of these guys right here, or sometimes both, and they set them in the corner by the front door. And that's their plan. That's your home defense plan. That's not really a good plan because let's look at the possible scenarios. The bad guy's at the door but hasn't come in yet, but you know he's there. So you go towards the door where the bad guy is, and then you've got this big unwieldy thing that you then have to get ready to use as a weapon. Right? No, you should be going that way. And that's the other thing. We talk about him being unwieldy, and I'm not going to get too much into morality and legality. The baseball bat by the front door is one of kind of like the least thought out things in all of home defense or self-defense. Because this thing, I want you to find, go in your house. If you use a baseball bat for self-defense, people get a baseball bat in their hands and they just think like they're about to like mess somebody up. And I think I'm going to do a video on baseball bat self-defense because I actually do have a lot to say about it. But go in your home and tell me how many places, unless you're like super rich and you have a big home, I have like two spots I can stand in my house and not wreck shit with a baseball bat. Yeah, you could choke up, uh, you could go like overhead in a lot of places, or you could do the old WWE, I don't really want to hit you with the bat, so you do like this. But we're, we got a two-handed weapon, and we might need to do shit, like I don't know, open doors or pick up our kids or something. A one-handed weapon is generally gonna be better. Now, I say that, and I've obviously demonstrated that I believe that two-handed weapons are effective and good to use, but those, those definitely work with finality. We're maybe talking to people who live in other countries or who, for whatever reason, don't have guns. Uh, we need to talk about the kind of stuff that people think to pick up and how it could come into play. I think a one-handed weapon is really important. If your self-defense plan involves a weapon, you have to have practiced with it. You have to have at least swung it and hit some shit with it. A lot of people get crazy ideas in their head about what they would do in self-defense. And they don't think about like how tough it is to swing shit like this around. I think uh, we're getting closer to the neighborhood with this. And now also, you have to actually know how to hit shit with these. If you were a carpenter, you swing a hammer all the time, you'd probably be uh, a bad mamma jamma with one of them right there. Now, where are you going to keep it? You got to have it accessible. It's got to be, 
you know, when, when the door busts in, how are you going to get to it? That all needs to be thought out. That all needs to be visualized and practiced if you really hope to ever use any of it. Because it's unrealistic to think that uh, you're going to just suddenly spring it to action. Because I'm telling you what, when that door pops open, most people go like this. Even the people that think they won't. You start swinging around, you start realizing that the retraction and the wieldiness of it is really important. And then do we need to start going, you know, like purpose built? Like this is a little quicker. I think one thing that you definitely have to consider is when a person moves to take it or defend you and it starts hitting here, what kind of damage is it going to do? Uh, what kind of disabling is it going to do? And something like this definitely would. I swing this and someone puts their hands or arms up or tries to take it from me. Uh, that's not going to feel good. But this isn't, this isn't the wieldiest thing. I mean, you could choke up on it, and, but you lose a little bit of power. Or you could keep your hand out at the end and then retracting it and keeping that thing going, especially if you get entangled with someone. You got to have different looks with it. You got to be able to do different shit with it, um, you know, and be confident that when someone's grabbing you and trying to take it from you, you could still hurt them. So I think even if you're not going to carry a firearm, when you choose your home defense weapon, I think it should be an actual purpose-built weapon. But improvised weapons are cool too. Uh, but if you're going to go improvised weapons, or even if you're going to go planned weapons, you have to have one basically in every room unless you're carrying it on you. Let's talk about improvised weapons in the kitchen. When you think of the kitchen, what do you immediately think of? You think of one of these guys. Kitchen knife. Oh my God, I would just grab a kitchen knife. Bad guy comes in, I get one of these and you do what? What are you gonna do with it, Deborah? Deborah, what are you gonna do with this? Hey, Kyle, what are you gonna do with this? You are gonna stick this in a person? I don't think you are. I really, I don't think you could do that. I don't think you could bring yourself to stick this in a person and how sharp are your kitchen knives? Have you ever stuck it in anything? Have you ever tried to do that? I think I, me personally, I'd feel better with just being unarmed than this. I'm not a fan of edged weapons, period. Uh, go ahead and comment down below how stupid I am. I don't think edged weapons for self-defense are really, I don't even think it's a thing. I don't think knives are self-defense tools. I don't think they're effective self-defense weapons. The only use for a knife I see is if a person's already on me and I've already kind of fucked up, and I need to use that knife to get, like, I'm already fucked if I'm using a knife. If you go to slashing in someone's hands and arms, getting a, you know, final blow with a knife is not as easy as it seems. I actually think that this, I would probably rather have this than this. You're going to laugh. But, and like, do you know what's funny is I've even, I think about this stuff so much, I even know that this is not the grip I would use because this is too unwieldy, it, it's harder to bring back. I know that I would go thumb in there and that's kind of the point of the, the self-defense weapons. I know that this is how I would use, like, I'm sorry, I've thought about this, right? This is how I would use a pot or a pan. Thumb it, choke up, thumb inside so that I can wield it more quickly. I can defend if he has a sharp object, I can kind of put it between us. I can hit him with it, I can jab him with it. Uh, I, so when it comes to improvised weapons, you should be thinking about this stuff. As far as like purpose-built self-defense tools and weapons and stuff that was like made for that for home defense, you know I've tested all kinds of shit out. There's only a couple things that spring to mind. Tasers are out. They're too unreliable. They don't, I think, I don't know exactly what it is. I think they work like 50% of the time, like tops. They're just unreliable. And then after the person's done being tased, you then still have to deal with that person. Uh, I much prefer stuff that is going to really like either completely disable, at least partially disable somebody, you're gonna laugh, uh, but obviously I think a flashlight is super important. The M2R Pro Warrior is kind of my go-to, like uh, it's in my armor, there's one at my bedside, like this is my light. And I, I feel confident in using, you know, my hands for self-defense. Uh, I like having an empty hand, I like having this hand free so that I can grab or move my family or open doors or do anything. And this is a pretty stout weapon uh, and it's a blinding amount of light. This is also part of that flash sale. It's in this 
monstrosity of a color scheme. I'll link that down below. But the only other thing out of everything else that I've tested, I actually think that this is a pretty good use for the pepper gun. I'll link the review we did of this. It comes out in a stream pretty far and they're done. Almost everybody. People are going to say, well, some people it doesn't work. Well, those people are probably going to fuck you up anyway. Uh, this works on a high percentage of people and it works really well and it's non-lethal you do have to deal with some of the cross contamination if you then fight with the person but other than that you're gonna have to find your thing and now you know people are still probably upset about the edge weapon thing i mean there are purpose-built knives that are made for hurting people and i'm not saying that you couldn't hurt somebody with one of them but edge weapons to me this is a, a funny little tool this guy right here i don't think you can get this anymore but this is this is much impact tool as edge tool, and if that hits forearm or hand or whatever, uh, they're done. This guy right here, this is like the 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 big orcs from Lord of the Rings, the uruk eye, those big orcs. This is like if they had a knife, that's what they would carry. But this is actually a breaching tool. It's actually thick like a pry bar. So, you know, I'd maybe hit somebody with that, but I think one-handed operation inside, I think two feet or less. Um, oh, about the baseball bat. I lied. I actually do think a baseball bat for self-defense or home defense can be viable, but I think it's got to be, you know, uh, I think two feet or under, something you can operate with one hand and pull back real quick. I think that is a little more reasonable than the old venerable Louisville slugger. You just have to be able to swing it in a house because uh, you should not be going out of your house to defend your home. We're gonna talk about that more. I, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do, not only am I gonna do something about baseball bats for self-defense, both small and large, and self-defense against baseball bats, I think I wanna do some more home invasion stuff where I talk about the actual strategy and tactics. But as far as your weapon choice, you need to make it in advance. You don't wanna to try to make it up right then. So you need to play with the shit around your house and figure out, could you use this thing? This won't work. Uh, you know, some guys even use just an axe handle, which I still think is too big and unwieldy. And I know that you think you're like a level eight dwarven barbarian and you know like all kinds of cool ways that you can use this thing besides like, you know, besides like this. But all that stuff is just ways of, of using it in spite of the disadvantage. They don't create inherent advantages. You being able to deliver short strikes with a weapon that is essentially... A liability more than an asset once that initial strike you know misses or fails to stop them they're gonna get a hold of this and wrench this out of your hands and it's just in the way I don't like a two-handed weapon that's not a firearm for home defense or even self-defense this is the SOG fast hawk and this guy's pretty badass not only is it big enough that it can do damage it can go either way and it's quick you can use that sucker quick and of course you could throw it which if you throw a tomahawk at a home invader i don't care what else happens after that man you're a hero and you win in my book